Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. I open this program today with the words of the psalmist. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Because He alone is worthy. The Lord alone is worthy of our praise and adoration. Because the Bible plainly tells us He is our prophet, He is our priest, and the Lord Jesus is our King. And when I say King, I mean King over all principalities and powers, over all economic, religious, political uh, authorities in the earth. Everything from Babylon to Rome to modern Babylon. Jesus is King. On our program today, I would like for us to go to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is rather unique in several ways. It's the I Am Gospel. It's the Gospel of Belief. It's the Gospel of the Revelation of the Son of God and the teachings of Jesus that are so wonderful and so powerful. Now, to begin with, I would like to point out that if you have your Bible, this is a very interesting thing to know in studying the book of John. Now, we know that the ministry of Jesus was three and a half years long. Three and a half years. But beginning in John chapter 10 and verse 22 begins the last four months of His ministry. And those four months, beginning in John 10, 22, and then when it goes over to John 13, verse 1, is the time of the Passover. That's in the spring of the year. So from 10.22 to 13.1 is four months, the last four months of the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. Now how do we know this? In 10.22 it talks about, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of of the dedication, and it was winter. The Feast of the Dedication was also called the Feast of Lights. That was a Jewish holiday that is now called Hanukkah. It's still referred to as the Feast of Lights, and each uh, year at Hanukkah, you know, the, the Jewish people they light eight candles because it's in commemoration of the purification of the temple after the temple was defiled by Antiochus Epiphanes in approximately 164 B.C. So they ran him out because History tells us that he sacrificed a pig on the altar. And Judas Maccabeus overcame the Syrian army, ran them out, and retook the temple, rededicated the temple, and then this alleged miracle of oil supplied the candelabra for eight days. That's the history of this 
Feast of Dedication, Feast of Lights, or later became known as Hanukkah. That was on December the 25th, on our December the 25th, which is called the, uh, the month of Chislu. Now, being that that Feast of Dedication took place on what we call December 25th, and then Jesus was crucified at Passover in the spring, that's how we get the span of four months, the last four months of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now, within the last four months, there were three major events that got Jesus in trouble. Three major events in which he received a lot of opposition from the leaders of Judaism, the Pharisees and the scribes and the chief priests and so forth. Three events, and I want to cover those three events. Hopefully we'll have time to explain these three events and the opposition that each one generated. The first one is found in John chapter 10. Now Jesus in verses 7 through 21, He's talking about He being the shepherd of the flock. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Now. In Psalm 23, 1, the psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd. So that's Old Testament context. Jesus comes along and says, I am the shepherd. So how many shepherds do we have? Do we have two shepherds or do we have one? We have one shepherd. And in the book of Ezekiel, the Bible tells us that we will have the Lord would bring both houses, Israel and Judah, back together, and He would be the one shepherd over both houses and make them one again. So we have that teaching early on in the book of John, chapter 10. And then it comes down to where we begin in John, chapter 10, verse 22. The first event that got Jesus in trouble and that generated a lot of hate and uh, opposition towards Him. I begin reading in 22, And it was at Jerusalem the Feast of the Dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Now, there is no record that Jesus ever entered any further into the temple other than Solomon's porch. Now, we know that this temple was the Lord's house at one time, but it had been desecrated not only by the Syrians, but it had become just a ceremonial. The glory of God had departed from the temple. The glory of God had departed from the temple. There was no Ark of the Covenant there because that was lost during the Babylonian captivity. The glory cloud was gone. So was this God's head, headquarters on earth while Jesus was on earth? No, it wasn't. Jesus, if I may put it this way, was the headquarters of God Almighty on earth while He was on earth, not that earthly temple. But they held the people, the Pharisees held the people in bondage by the temple. Jeremiah 7, the temple, the temple, the temple of the Lord are these. So they held the people in bondage by that. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch, and He did not go into the holy place or the most holy place because, number one, He wasn't allowed. Number two, he was not going to uh, 
go in there as a Levitical priest because Jesus was a Melchizedek priest of a higher, much higher order. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And this is what Jesus said. Verse 25, I told you, and ye believed not. He told them that he was the Christ. He had, he, he's telling us in verse 25, I have already told you that I'm the Christ, that I am the Messiah. But ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. The miracles that Jesus did, the healing of the blind men, the raising of the widow's son from the dead, the raising of Jairus' daughter from the dead, Healing the lame, the deaf, the crippled, those were the works of God, proving one of the proofs that Jesus was the Messiah. So these people was without excuse in their unbelief. Now, on this program today, I am preaching Jesus. I'm stressing the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those people that he had to encounter that did not believe, Jesus denounced them. He did not embrace them. Verse 26, But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. Because earlier, you see, in John chapter 10, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known of mine. And he told these Pharisees and these opposers of his, you are not of my sheep. Now, I'm not saying this. Jesus said this, and it's in my Bible, and it's in your Bible. In verse 27, he said, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. What is he saying here? You know, on a, on a car battery... There's a negative and a positive pole or post. And it creates a polarity between the two. It's the same thought that we have here in verse number 27. Jesus made a positive statement, My sheep hear my voice. But there's a negative implication. You don't hear my voice because you are not of my sheep. I mean, that's just the grammar of the English language. That's just the natural flow of thought. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. He's talking about his sheep. But he said unto them, you're not my sheep. So these people do not have eternal life that Jesus was talking to. And it's, it's, it's just pretty plain as to who he was talking to. It's stated in verse 24. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Very significant thought. My Father, verse 29, My Father, which gave them 
me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Let's think about that. In verse 28, Jesus said that my sheep are in my hand. And then in verse 29, He says, My Father, which gave the sheep to Me, are in My Father's hand. So how many hands are His sheep in? How many hands are you in? Are you in Jesus' hand or the Father's hand? Then He clears it up. He makes everything plain. In the next verse, in six words, I and my Father are one, one hand. We're in the Lord's hand, God Almighty, the Father, and we're in the hand of the Lord Jesus. It's the same hand, the same hand. Now, this is the event that got Jesus in trouble. This is the event right here. Within the first of the three events in the last four months, Jesus proclaiming His oneness with God. Jesus proclaiming His oneness with God. Jesus never referred to Himself, neither did any other Bible writer refer to Jesus as the second person of the Godhead. Never once. Never once. He said, I and my Father are one. Now here's the opposition that begins in verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone Him. This wasn't the first time that they hated Him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from My Father. For which of those works do ye stone Me? The Jews answered Him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. These Jews, whether they be Pharisees or the common people, no doubt there were Pharisees or scribes among them, learned people. They were intelligent enough to know, and they were perceptive enough to realize what Jesus said in verse 30 was He was proclaiming Himself to be God. Because in verse 33, they said, the reason why we want to stone you is not because of the miracles that you did, healing the blind man or raising the dead. That's not the reason. But the reason is because you make yourself God. And friends, Jesus is God. He's the totality of God. Don't cut Him short. Let Jesus be who He declared Himself to be. Paul the Apostle said that Jesus was the fullness, that means 100% of the Godhead 
while He was in His body. Book of Colossians. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You might say, no, I've never heard that, or I don't believe that, or that's not what my church believes, or my pastor told me that that is wrong. Now, not too long ago, I heard a a preacher on television say, well, anybody that teaches that, oh, that's right out of the pits of hell. How can he say that? When Jesus Himself declared, I and my Father are one, and these Pharisees or scribes or whoever they be that Jesus was talking to, the, this, this Jewish crowd knew what He meant. Because you see, in the Old Testament, the scribes, the leaders of Israel in the Old Testament, and these Pharisees at the time of Jesus knew one thing that was paramount in Hebraism or Hebrewism as stated in the Old Testament, and that is monotheism. Monotheism. There is only one God. And it's stated several times in the book of Isaiah. The first and the last in the book of Isaiah. So that's the Old Testament concept. Then Jesus comes along in Revelation chapter 1 and says, I am the first and the last, O Alpha and Omega. He's God. So our God in flesh gave His life. for our sins. That's powerful. Well, let me move on. More opposition. Jesus encountered more opposition. Let me read verse 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods or judges? If He called them gods or judges, unto whom the word of God came, and the Scripture cannot be broken, Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, don't believe me. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore, verse 39, Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. They sought again to take him. It's very plain in the book of John that the Jewish authorities delivered Jesus to Pilate. And in Revelation, uh, not Revelation, excuse me, but in John chapter 19 and verse 11, Jesus and Pilate are having a dialogue. And this is what Jesus said to Pilate, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Or he's saying to Pilate, you have sin in condemning me, but you know somebody that has greater sin than you? The people, the religious authorities of Judaism that delivered me to you, they have the greater sin. Now, That's what we're talking about in Jesus' declaration of Him being God was the first event in that four months, last four months, 
that the authorities decided we have to get rid of him. And Jesus said elsewhere in John 15, 25, it is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. I'm not going to be able to get to the other two events on this program, but the Lord willing, we'll cover them the next time. We here at Truth and History produce a magazine, and it's called Truth and History. And if you have never received a free copy of this magazine, I encourage you to write to us. You may call us. You may send an email and request a free subscription to this magazine. And We believe that the articles in this magazine are very enlightening, very encouraging to those that have eyes to see and ears to hear. Because this magazine is rather unique, and the articles that you may read in this particular issue are not what you are hearing on this particular program. But we pray that you would take advantage of this because this is, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a golden opportunity to learn things concerning Scripture and history that would be rather difficult to learn otherwise. Because our ministry is truth in history, and that's what we're trying to bring together. Facts that are somewhat neglected, facts that are somewhat forgotten by most ministries, we want to bring them to light. Because we believe when Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, truth will not set you free unless you know it. You know, the truth is, a bridge is out up ahead, but that knowledge won't set you free unless you know it. It won't protect you unless you know it. And we want to proclaim Jesus Christ as, as the Son of God and God Himself in flesh, and He reigns over all presently, right now. He is reigning over all. And He's coming back as the King of kings and the Lord of lords over this whole worldly system. And we welcome His return. God bless you. For any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you and may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry. Truth in History, where the Word of God is not bound.